This video is a fragment from my preparing for a front-end interview course. Check out the link in the description to buy the course at a discounted price. Alright, in this lecture, we are going to learn about promises in JavaScript. Here is a useful piece of info. In about 80% of the interviews I appeared for, I was asked about promises. So if you're appearing for a senior dev position, you can take it for granted that you will be asked about this topic. So make sure you have a thorough understanding about promises in JavaScript. I want to begin by helping you understand promises with a simple analogy. Once you understand the big picture in simple layman terms, we will then move on to understanding promises in JavaScript. Consider a scenario where you and your roommate want to have dinner at home. You want to prepare your special soup and at the same time, you feel like having tacos from the food truck nearby. So you ask your roommate, hey, can you go down to the food truck and get us some tacos? Your friend says, sure. And when he's about to leave, you tell him, there is no point in me waiting till you're back to prepare the soup. So I'll start with the soup now, but when you reach the place, can you promise that you'll text me so that I can start setting up the dining table? Also, let me know if something goes wrong. If you can't find the food truck or if they're out of tacos for the night, whatever might be the reason, just let me know that you cannot get the tacos and I'll start cooking some pasta instead. Your friend says, sure, I promise. I'll head out now and text you in some time. Now you go about preparing your soup, but the status on tacos, we can say that it is currently pending till you receive that message from your friend. When you get back a text message saying that he's getting the tacos, your desire to eat tacos has been fulfilled. You can then proceed to set up the dining table. If the text message says that he cannot bring back any tacos, your desire to have tacos have been rejected and now you have to cook some pasta instead. All right, now let's pick the important bits from this scenario and relate it back to JavaScript and promises. In the scenario, your friend is like a promise in JavaScript. While your friend is on his way to the food truck, you know that it could take a while and you don't want to sit idle. So you start preparing soup in the meantime. This part is an analogy to an asynchronous operation in JavaScript, fetch tacos. When your friend texts you with can get tacos or can't get tacos, it answers your question on whether he's getting the tacos or not. In JavaScript, this is the promise return value. If the return value is can get tacos, the promise is said to be fulfilled. If the return value is cannot get tacos, for whatever might be the reason, the promise is said to be rejected. If the promise is fulfilled, you can set up the dining table. This is a success callback. Or in other words, it is the callback function that gets executed when promise resolved successfully. If the promise is rejected, you can cook some pasta and this is the failure callback. Or in other words, it is the callback function that gets executed when the promise failed to resolve and was rejected instead. That pretty much is a high level overview of what a promise is in JavaScript. Let's read through the MDN definition of a promise. A promise is a proxy for a value not necessarily known when the promise is created. It allows you to associate handlers with an asynchronous action's eventual success value or failure reason. To understand this definition better, let's break it down. A promise is a proxy for a value. Going back to our example, your friend made a promise that he will let you know 
whether he can or cannot get tacos, which is the promise value. The promise value is not necessarily known when the promise is created. In our example, you don't know which one of them is the value when your friend made his promise. He can get tacos or cannot get tacos. You don't necessarily know that value. A promise allows you to associate handlers with an asynchronous action's eventual success value or failure reason. In our example, based on the promise value, you could decide ahead of time what has to be done when the promise is eventually fulfilled or rejected. That is, either setting up the table or cooking pasta. Hopefully, the definition makes much more sense now. Technically, let me tell you that a promise is simply an object in JavaScript. And a promise is always in one of the three states. Pending, which is initial state, that is neither fulfilled nor rejected. We have fulfilled, meaning that the operation completed successfully. And we have the rejected state, meaning that the operation failed. All right, you should now be having a fair understanding of what a promise is in JavaScript. Now for the next question. Why would you use a promise? Well, for one and only one purpose. Promises help us deal with asynchronous code in a far more simpler way compared to callbacks. Remember the callback help we spoke about in the previous lecture? Well, that can be avoided with promises and the code can be sort of read in a simple synchronous way. You'll see this in just a bit when we take a look at an example. All right, that is the what and why about promises. Next, let's see how to work with promises in JavaScript. If we go back to our example, we have your friend as an analogy for a promise. We have can get tacos or cannot get tacos, which is the promise value that your friend should inform you about. If he can get tacos, he's fulfilling his promise. If he cannot get tacos, he is rejecting his promise. And we have the success callback and the failure callback that we need to attach to the result returned by the promise. Either set up the table or cook pasta. Now these six points cover the necessary information about a promise. So now we need to understand three things in code. How to create a promise which covers point number one, how to fulfill or reject the promise, which covers points two, three, and four, and finally, how to execute callback functions based on whether the promise is fulfilled or rejected, which covers points five and six. Let's go over them one by one, starting with how to create a promise. We create an instance of a promise using the new keyword with the promise constructor function. So const promise is equal to new promise. Next question, how to fulfill or reject the promise? Well, it turns out that the promise constructor function accepts one function as its argument. So let's pass in an arrow function. This arrow function automatically receives two arguments, resolve, and reject. Here, resolve and reject are both functions. Resolve is a function which when called, changes the status of the promise from pending to fulfilled. Reject is a function which when called, changes the status of the promise to rejected. This is very important to keep in mind. You cannot directly mutate the status of a promise. You can call the resolve function to fulfill the promise or the reject function to reject the promise. But both these functions are typically called after an async operation. To keep things simple, let's use a set timeout. We're going to assume that for your friend to go out and text you back, it takes five seconds. 
So our code now changes to incorporate the set timeout. If the food truck was found, we will call resolve after five seconds. If the food truck was not found, we call reject after five seconds. This is pretty much how you fulfill or reject a promise. The final part is to understand how to execute callback functions based on the status change of the promise. Let's define two callback functions. On fulfillment is the function to be called if resolve is called after the async operation. On rejection is the function to be called if reject is called after the async operation. Going back to our analogy, if the food truck was found, our promise is fulfilled, in which case we want to set up the table to eat tacos. If the food truck was not found and our promise is rejected, we have to start cooking the pasta. I've turned those actions into log statements on line three and line eight. Ideally, there would be more code in your callback functions, but we simply log it to the console and it serves the purpose. Now I keep telling you that we are defining callback functions, but callback functions are functions that are passed in as arguments to other functions, right? Well, where are those other functions? This is the point where the promise we have created comes into picture. When we create a new promise using the promise constructor function, the promise object gives us access to two methods or functions if you want to call it that, then and catch. We call those functions using promise.then and promise.catch as you can see on lines 18 and 19. But here is the important bit. If the status of the promise changes from pending to fulfilled by calling the resolve function, the function that is passed to then function will automatically get invoked. And if the status of the promise changes from pending to rejected by calling the reject function, the function that is passed to catch function will automatically get invoked. In our case, we need to pass on fulfillment function to then and on rejection function to catch. Since the two functions are passed in as arguments to other functions, they are callback functions. Hopefully that makes sense now. Our promise code works as expected, but there is room for improvement. What if we want to send out some data when resolving or rejecting a promise? That way, Inside our callback functions, we can make use of the value to do something else. Well, it turns out that we can do that by passing an argument to resolve or reject. For the resolve function on line six, we'll pass in a string which says bringing tacos. And for reject on line 14, I'll pass in a string that says not bringing tacos, food truck not there. But how do we access these strings in our callback functions? Well, the great thing about a promise is that it will automatically inject the argument passed to resolve as the argument to the onfulfillment callback and the argument passed to reject as the argument to the on rejection callback. You can see that I've included parameters to both these callbacks and simply log them to the console on line three and line nine. So we would now see the output, bringing tacos, set up the table to eat tacos from lines three and four when the promise is fulfilled. Or if there is an error and hence a rejection, we would see cannot bring tacos, start cooking pasta from lines nine and 10. Of course, in a practical scenario, your result would be an object or an array or any data type that your async operation returns and the error might be an object with different error codes. And in your on rejection callback handler, you might want to perform different actions based on the error status code. But this pretty much is the fundamentals of promises in JavaScript. There are a few more details though, which we will understand in the next lecture.